Hi, I'm Dr. Haley, and I wanted to make this video for you to share some things that have helped a lot of teenagers that I've worked with all over the world when they were facing big challenges like what we're all going through. What you're experiencing is obviously a huge change. And this can be really challenging because all of a sudden things are totally different and unfamiliar. You, know, you can't see your friends, you have to study from home, and a lot of things you might've been looking forward to have all of a sudden been taken away. It's normal to feel all sorts of things in this situation. You might be feeling overwhelmed or anxious or frustrated or bored or excited by these changes. And you might be feeling all these things at once, which can be a little bit confusing. So I'm gonna give you some tools that can help you find a positive way through this. So the first thing you wanna do is notice your reaction. So I'll use myself as an example here. I was in self-isolation for two weeks and I was staying in an unfamiliar apartment all by myself in a different country. I had no idea if I was gonna be able to get back to my home and my family. And like a lot of you, I didn't know what was gonna happen with my future. So my first reaction was to block out all these feelings and just sit there and watch movies and binge on whatever food I could find, especially chocolate, because that's how I've coped in the past when I've been overwhelmed. I also found myself becoming more short-tempered and I was struggling to concentrate because my thoughts were really scattered. So these are all normal reactions to stress. So if you find yourself having any of these kind of responses, be nice to yourself and know that you're definitely not alone. People around you might also be reacting negatively towards you. But remember, this has nothing to do with you. It's just a signal that they're also stressed and overwhelmed. So just notice their reactions and point out to them if they're hurting you. Once we've noticed our reactions, the second thing we want to do is calm ourselves down so that we can start making helpful choices. You can do things like taking some slow, deep breaths or looking out your window or up at the sky or doing something creative. You can also use your imagination. Picture your favorite place to go, somewhere that's really calm and peaceful, where you feel really relaxed, maybe somewhere outside. You can close your eyes and picture yourself being there. This will help calm your mind down so that you can start thinking creatively about your options and opportunities. There's another tool that can help you calm your emotions down if you're feeling really overwhelmed or anxious. And that's to feel the emotion as a physical sensation in your body. See if you can locate where it's most intense. So for instance, I feel anxiety most in my throat and chest. So bring your attention to the sensation itself and see if you can picture it. See if you can imagine that it has a color and a shape, a texture and a size. And as you're picturing this sensation in your body, also see if you can find another place that's not feeling the sensation, like maybe the bottoms of your feet. Bring your attention to both of these sensations at once and take some slow, deep breaths. This will help the feeling pass much more quickly. And the third thing you can do is to change your thoughts that might be making you feel more anxious. So it's really normal in this situation to be thinking things like, what if the worst thing happens? Or how am I gonna cope with this? Or I hate being at home with my annoying sibling. But if you can instead start thinking, what is the next thing I can do that will help me move forward? That will change your experience of this situation. You can think about things like finding an at-home fitness routine or figuring out something new that you wanna study or learn or finding creative ways of cooking. This might be a time where you can have conversations with your family that you don't usually get a chance to have. Even things that don't sound that fun, like cleaning your room or organizing your things can be really helpful because it helps your mind become clean and organized too. And if you're on social media or you have a phone, rather than endlessly scrolling and thinking about all the things you can't do, instead use these channels to reach out to a friend and share with them what you're really feeling and ask for support if you need it. When you're focusing on taking these simple steps, it will help you feel more hopeful and calm. And then you can start thinking bigger thoughts like, what can I gain from going through this? Or how can I help myself or the people I care about in a big way right now? When everything is up in the air like this, 
there's an opportunity to find a different part of ourselves. So for instance, if you're an athlete and you can't go outside anymore, you might find that you have a skill for cooking you never realized. Or if you've never really enjoyed outdoor exercise, this might be the perfect time to figure out ways that you can stay fit in your own home. Or if you struggle with certain subjects at school, you might find a whole different thing that you can learn about that really excites you. I know right now it's hard for any of us to imagine how we're gonna get through this and what it's gonna look like on the other side. But if you use these strategies, you are teaching yourself the skill of turning challenges into opportunities. And that is gonna help you in so many ways in your life. And remember, if you're really struggling, reach out for help. You know, this is a difficult time for all of us. And the most important thing is that you're reminded that you're safe and that people care about you.